Last time we helped Eagle retrieve his lost cat named Yellow, but he was only successful about every third time. This time we'll learn how to use a color sensor to help Eaglet be more successful and learn how the same sensor can help score more points in the annual first Lego League Challenge. One of the problems with the program we created in episode four is it depends on exactly where Chariot starts. Let's take a closer look. Here's what happened when Chariot starts right in front of the house. Here's what happened when it starts halfway between the road and the house. Let's consider how the color sensor could help Chariot move to the center of the road each time. The color sensor is actually a combination of a little light bulb called a light emitting diode or LED, plus a sensor that measures the amount of light and the color of the light it receives. We can use programming blocks that either check for a particular color or measure how much of the LED's light is being reflected back to the sensor. First, let's attach a color sensor to the robot. We want the sensor to be close enough to the mat to get a good reading, but not so close that the light from the LED won't be able to reflect off the mat and back to the sensor. Let's connect the sensor to port A. The Spike Prime app has a couple of ways of showing us what a sensor is seeing or detecting. First, we connect to the hub as usual using Bluetooth. Then, if we look carefully, we see that there is a little icon in the upper left of the screen that looks a bit like the color sensor. Underneath, there's an indication of what it's seeing. If we click the hub icon to the left, we get a better view of what's going on with the sensors and motors. We're going to be using the color sensor to look for the edge of the road. Because the road is black rather than a particular color, it's better to have the sensor measure the amount of light that's being reflected from the mat. To see the amount of light the sensor is measuring, we can click on the sensor icon and change it to reflect. Now, if we hold the sensor over a white part of the mat, we get a reading of about 99%, indicating that almost all of the LED's light is reflecting off the mat. If we move the sensor over the road, the measurement drops down to about 50%. Let's pick a number that's larger than 50 to determine we're over the road. Let's use 60. That way, if we're not over the darkest part of the road, the program will still know it's the road. Let's create a simple program to learn more about using the sensor in a program. We want the robot to check the color sensor over and over again and let us know when it sees the road. To do this, we start with a control block called Forever. This block lets us put other blocks in it and those blocks will be performed over and over again. We want to turn off the light when the sensor is over the dark road and turn it on when it's over the white mat. So we put another control block called If Then Else inside the Forever block. The first part of the block is the if part, where we can add something that is either true or false. We want to turn off the light on the center button on the top of the robot when the color sensor sees the road. So we select a blue sensor block that tells the program whether the reflected light is below a certain number. We leave the port as A because that's where we plugged in the sensor. We change the 50 to 60 so the if part becomes true when the sensor is over the dark road. The next part of the if then else block is the then, which is where we put a block that should execute when it's true the sensor is over the road. Right now, we're testing our understanding of the color sensor, so we put a purple light block there that turns the center button to black or off. We need to change the center button back to white when the sensor no longer sees the road, so we put another light block in this else part that does that. The else part is executed whenever the if part is false. In this case, it will be false when the color sensor receives 60% or more of the light from the LED. Let's read our program. When the program starts, forever repeat the following. If the color sensor connected to port A receives reflected light less than 60%, set the center button light to black. Else, 
set the center button light to white. Let's store our new program in location 0 and see what it does. We start the program by pressing the center button. The button is white, which means the sensor hasn't detected the road yet. We hold the robot over the road. The center button light turns off just like we wanted it to. Let's move it away from the road. The light goes back on. One more time. It's off over the road. It's on over a white part of the map. Elit seems to find our experiment interesting. Now let's build a program that uses the color sensor to help Chariot rescue Yellow the Cat. To save time, we'll start with the program we used last time and make some changes. Let's work on adding the color sensor to the program. The old program always backed up four inches. As we saw, that made it very sensitive to where Chariot started. To get the rescue mission started in the middle of the road, we need to find the road. We can use the color sensor to do that. We need to start Chariot backing up, but the start moving block in the main movement menu doesn't allow us to tell the robot to back up. Fortunately, there's another movement menu called More Movement. We can add it by clicking on the tiny icon in the lower left corner of the screen. We then click on More Movement. The new menu of blocks appears at the bottom. The block we need allows us to set the speeds of the two motors separately. In the last episode, I didn't show you that Eaglet often slid off the back of Chariot as it came to a stop after backing out of the driveway. To fix this, we need to back up slower than we did before. We have both motors move Chariot backwards at 25% speed by setting both speeds to minus 25. Once the movement starts, we need the program to wait until the color sensor detects the road. We add a wait until block to do this. We then add a sensor that becomes true when the amount of reflection drops below 60%. This will cause the robot to keep moving back until the sensor sees the road. Because the sensor is mounted on the front of the robot, it won't detect the road until its wheels have gone past the center of the road. To center it on the middle of the road, we add one more block to move the robot one and a half inches forward. Let's see what happens after we save the program in slot 5. Good. Chariot is running in the center of the road. Let's stop it and try again from another starting position. Even though Chariot started closer to the road this time, it ended up in the center of the road again. Let's let Eaglet and Chariot complete their mission. Well, the program almost works, but Chariot turns a little bit too much before it lowers the arm to yellow. In the next episode, we'll use the gyro that we learned about in episode 3 to cause the turn to yellow the cat to be more accurate.